G'day, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kathy. This is where I talk about all my pet projects. Today, I'm going to go through a few more advanced options in relation to setting up a QNAP NAS. Now I have a few preliminary things I want to get out of the way before I get started with the video. I have said this before, but I'm going to repeat it. I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have set up my NASAs for my home use. So I have some knowledge when it comes to NASAs, but I don't have any technical expertise and I don't really understand every single thing that I do with my NASAs. I don't think you need to understand all the technical jargon to get it up and running and performing well for you. But I know that when I first started, I struggled a little. There were a lot of terms that I had never heard of before and I had to do a lot of research and a lot of reading. And I have also explored some of the more advanced options which I thought I would share with you. Now if you are an expert on NASA's and networking and all that, seriously this video will not be for you. This series of videos are for those who have no technical expertise, who don't know anything about NASA's, like I didn't when I first started. And if you are looking for more expert advice, then I would suggest that you go and see somebody like NAS Compares or Span.com because they are a wonderful resource relating to NASA's. I learned so much from them and it helped guide me in the right direction when I wanted to do a bit further research. Now I know I initially mentioned that I would bring out a computer related video every fortnight but I'm finding it a little bit hard to keep to that schedule simply because I'm having to use new software that I've never used before like recording my computer screen as well as recording my phone or tablet. So it's taken me a little bit longer to get these videos out and I do apologise for that. And I still don't know if I'll be able to commit to every fortnight, but I will definitely attempt to do so. Okay, I'm going to timestamp this video if you'd like to skip ahead to any particular point. Now in this video, I am going to assume that you have already set up your NAS for the first time. The first thing I want to talk about is QFinder Pro. You should already have installed it on your computer and when I say computer I mean either a desktop computer or a laptop. QFinder Pro is quite a powerful tool. You can change a lot of the settings there but clearly not everything. Generally speaking in order to make changes to your NAS you need to do so through the QTS user interface. But the QFinder Pro can be extremely helpful for certain other things. I have had a situation where I could not locate my NAS. For some reason the IP address changed. The only way I could locate it was actually through QFinder Pro. So it's an extremely powerful tool that I would suggest that you familiarise yourself with. If at any stage you can't find your NAS and it's not listed in here, you can go up here where it says QFinder Pro up the top and press the refresh button and that should then be able to locate your NAS. And next to it, you will find the IP address. There is also configuration settings. You can rename the device, you can change the password, and you can have a look whether it uses a static IP address or a dynamic IP address. If, like me, when you initially set up your NAS, you did not set it up to use a static IP address, I'm going to show you how to change that in QTS. We are now back in the QTS user interface. You're going to go into Control Panel, where it says Network and File Services. You're going to go where it says Network and Virtual Switch. If we go into Interfaces, you'll see I have two adapters. You will only have the one. We're going to go here where those three little dots are. We're going to go into Configure. Under IPv4, you are going to click Use Static IP Address. You're going to Apply. 
if you do know the DNS settings for your internet provider, then you can insert it here, but it's not necessary. You're going to close and you're going to continue. I would recommend that you use the same IP address that you were given to start off with so you don't have to go and change anything. The next thing I wanted to talk about is admin accounts. The default user or username that we use to access our NAS through the browser is admin, A-D-M-I-N. I think every NAS is issued with the same default username. We can change the password, of course, but I believe it is better to disable the default username, admin, and create your own administrator account. The reason I suggest that you do so is because people have tried to hack my NAS, don't ask me why. All I have on them are media files. Regardless, I have had people trying to hack into my NAS using this default username of admin. I got tired of getting notifications about it and in the end I just disabled the account. The process isn't difficult, but to make it easier, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I'm going to take you into the control panel here. Under privilege, down here where it says users, you will see that I have two administrators. There is the default one, which is admin. And there is Kathy because I'm very original. And that is now my administrator account that I use to log into my QNAP NAS. You're going to go up here where it says create. You're going to create a user here. I'm going to call it K1. Now you can also add your phone number here and your email. If you ever want to get notifications about anything regarding your NAS. Now if you have a look on the right where it says user group, you'll see that this user K1 is under everyone. We're going to edit that. We are going to click on administrators and create it. Under action, all these little icons mean something. Now we're going to go into edit shared folder permission. I don't know if the color will come up, but on several folders, and these are shared folders, there is no access for this user. We are going to change that and give them read RW, which is read write access, to every single folder because an administrator should have complete access to all the shared folders on your NAS. Then you'll apply that and our K1 has administrator privileges to our NAS. Now when you log into your NAS, if you haven't created your own administrator account, you will have logged in under the username admin and in order to now disable that admin account we need to log out and if you have a look up here this is how you log out now when you log back in you do not use admin to log in you're going to use the new administrator account that you just created so we're going to log in as k1 as you can see we have now entered the QTS user interface as if for the first time. Now, if you are looking for help in relation to your NAS, you will see these three dots up the top in the right, where it says more, and this is where you will find help. Now, next to that, you will see my username K1 is listed, and it gives me different options in relation to this user. I can change the wallpaper, Let's go blue. Now we'll go back into the control panel under privilege where it says users and you'll see my admin account. The default one is enabled and we want to disable it. So we are going to edit that account up here where it says action. We're going to go into that and we are going to disable this account. Now that administrator account is no longer going to have access to our NAS. Now I want to talk about link aggregation. Now I'm not an expert and I really don't understand the technical aspects of this. What I do understand is that 
If your NAS is equipped with two LAN ports, local area network ports or Ethernet ports, whatever you want to call them, then you can connect two Ethernet cables to the back of your NAS and you can then connect both of them to your modem. Why would you want to do that? Because it combines then those two Ethernet ports and instead of say for example uploading at 100 megabytes or megabits, I can never remember which one it is, I'll correct myself on the screen anyway, but instead of uploading say at 100 megabits per second, by aggregating the two Ethernet ports, you can increase that to 200 megabits per second. I have link aggregated all my NASAs and I don't find that the speed is double, but it has improved performance. And if you have the capacity to attach two Ethernet cables to your NAS and then to your modem, then I definitely recommend you do so. There is an excellent article out by QNAP and I'm going to link it in my description box below if you want to read up on exactly how link aggregation works. It can be a little fiddly to set up, so I'm now going to take you back to my computer and show you how to do that. Going to go into Control Panel, where it says Network and File Services, you're going to go where it says Network and Virtual Switch. If we go into Interfaces, you'll see I have two adapters. We're going to go into port trunking. We're going to say add. And we're going to click both of these. Adapter 1 and adapter 2. We're going to go into next. We're just going to click next. And we're going to say apply. Now because we are link aggregating these two Ethernet ports, you will also need to set it as a static IP address and you'll do that on the side where those three little dots are under configure. The next topic I wanted to cover are the different apps that are available on your NAS. There are pretty much apps for everything and it is entirely up to you as to what you install on your NAS and what you don't. Now the kind of apps that you can install are things like video station, there's the music station, the photo station. Now you can try them, you can see if you like them, if you don't you can uninstall them. I've done that many times. There's just so many different apps and so many different things that you can do with the NAS that I really can't go through all of them. The best way is to go through the apps that are available and then you can make a decision whether it will work for you or not and whether you want to install it or not. Not everything is enabled on your NAS when you first get it. They usually have certain programs which are installed, but if you ever want to add more programs, you will go into the App Center here. Now up the top, these are my apps that are installed. As you can see, they say open. But if we go to all apps, you will see there are really so many apps that you can add to your NAS. Some other apps which you might find useful are things like a Plex Media Server, Download Station, QMail Sync, also backup programs. Honestly, the list is endless. And if you're not sure if you want to install an app or not, click on it and it will give you information as to what that app does. And then you can make a decision whether to install it. Security is always very, very important on any device that you use, be it a computer, a tablet, a phone, or a NAS. Like anything that is on a network, NASs can also be hacked, but there are ways to protect yourself. One of the tools that you should definitely install, and I strongly recommend, is the malware remover and also the antivirus program. There is a new program, which I'm unfamiliar with, called Security Counselor, which I have read is also a good idea to install. You can also purchase different antivirus programs. Honestly, I find that the antivirus that comes with QNAP that is free does the job, but it's up to you if you want to provide further security or use other antiviral programs. But at the minimum, you should install 
the malware remover and also the antivirus program. And now I'll take you back to my computer yet again and I'll show you how to install those and how to set them up. Now in order to install the malware remover, you'll need to go into the App Center up here. Now I've actually got malware remover already installed on my NAS. In order for you to install it, you're going to go into all apps, you can do a search for it and then install it. Once it's installed, then you're going to open it up. And up the top here is the settings. I've set it to scan on a schedule. I like to do it daily. It really doesn't take very long. Set an instant scan after malware updates, automatically update it, and I would tick all of these boxes and just apply. In relation to antivirus, you're going to go back into the control panel. You're going to scroll down to where it says applications. And you'll see here antivirus. So we'll click on that. And then once you're in antivirus, you're going to enable it. And I would also check that it would be updated automatically. Then we're going to go into scan jobs. You are going to add a scan job. You can call it anything you like. I called it anti-V and I wanted to scan all folders. Then we'll go next and it would ask me how often do I want it to scan. With antivirus, it's always a good idea to do it daily, in my opinion. You can change the hours. You can make it scan every few minutes. You can make it scan every 12 hours, but it does eat some of the resources. I find daily is sufficient for me and you can set it, say, in the evening or when you're asleep for it to do the scan. So we are going to put it at 3 a.m. And we're going to next. We want it to scan all files. You can choose quick scan, but I would definitely recommend that it scan all files. Then we're going to next. Going to next again. I definitely would not choose delete infected files automatically. So I would choose between only report the virus or move infected files to quarantine. And then you finish. And that's it. If you ever need to edit it, you can go up here under action. You can change which folders, the schedule or anything you like. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention is Security Counselor. I only recently installed Security Counselor. So I can't really tell you if it's useful or not. And it is entirely up to you whether you decide to install it or not. Now I found that this video ran a little too long, so I've split it into two. I'll bring out the next part in two weeks from today. I thought I would ask you guys to let me know, do you prefer longer videos or shorter videos? I'm just concerned that if I make them too long that people will lose interest or fall asleep halfway through because there is sometimes a lot of information to get through. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I'll answer as best I can. If there's any topics you would like me to cover, again, let me know down in the comments and if I can, I will definitely cover it. And also, if I got anything wrong, please do correct me. I would really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, can give it a thumbs up if you haven't already you can subscribe to my channel i hope you all have a wonderful day until next time take care guys bye